Okay, starting off with this bio. One of, yeah, there are several new Pokemon you can find out in the Safari Zone. The first one you can find by fishing is Goldeen. Goldeen is a very generic water type Pokemon. I do not recommend this Pokemon that much. Unless if you want to have it as a water HM slave. You can also find its evolution out here seeking. Once again, by fishing out here. They are not really good water type Pokemon. They're just really, really hard for me to recommend these Pokemon at all. Its stats right here pretty much just show for why that is. Several of the moves that it learns doesn't really sit well for its stats, personally. And, um, like I said, I can only recommend this one if you want to have a decent water HM slave. They're really hard to find with the Super Rod, but if you can find one of these things, they're really good to have. This is Dragonair, another pure dragon type. Uh, Dragonairs exist in the water out here by Super Rod. They're really hard to find, like say, 1% of the time. If you can catch this one, it's a good Pokemon. The only problem is, it takes up to level 55 to evolve into Dragonite. At level 55, it evolves into this bad boy. It takes a long time for it to evolve, but if you can do that, nothing can really standing in your way. The stats right here pretty much just show for why that is. This thing is a beast. It may not be one of the fastest ones out there, but just look at that stat arrangements. Some of the, the dragon type physical attack moves don't exist in this game, but it does in the next game, and it just gets so much better beyond. If you want to have a really good dragon type, well, considering that this is the only dragon type Pokemon you can get, well, at least in the main, in the main game, I highly recommend it. So one of the other new Pokemon that you can find, you can mostly find these in, um, in a fire red out here, but, um, yeah. This is Nidorina. They are more defensive than offensive than his male counterpart, which I'll cover in just a minute. Um, I guess if you want to have a pretty decent defensive Pokemon, I guess I could recommend this one. To evolve it, you need to have a Moonstone. And this is Needle Queen. It's probably yeah. This thing becomes more defensive and then gains a ground type poke subtitle for it, right, which means it gains some more weaknesses, but in return you get a couple of immunities. Seeing how it specializes in defense and better defense, this one is alright to have, and like I said, it's only good for being a uh, defensive Pokemon. Everything else I don't really recommend it in any way. It's not a bad Pokemon, I just feel like it's only good for using a defense. Now for Nidorino, it is a more offensive than its a female counterpart. I don't really need to say much about it, but being a more offensive Pokemon is never a bad thing to have. Like Nidorina, to evolve it you need to have a Moonstone. It's not that much of a good Pokemon. It's only it's a good offensive Pokemon, don't get me wrong, but personally I think there are some better poison types out there. Even though it does gain the a ground type subtitle, like Nido Queen. But yeah. The heck am I saying? Nido King's awesome. Forget what I said from before. It is an awesome poison type Pokemon with some great physical attack. I don't know why I said that from before. Just ignore what I said. Ignore me! Up next is Venomoth, the evolution of Venonet, one of my personal favorites. Uh, despite its appearance, even though it can clearly fly, it can be hit by ground type moves. Which is slightly unusual, but anyway. Venomoth is actually a rather decent bug type. Even though that it's... It kind of pales in comparison to other bug type Pokemon in later generations. I seriously think that it's also not a bad idea to pick this one off if you want to have a decent poison type on your team. While its stats are maybe adequate, some of the movesets that I learned is actually rather decent. So I guess if you want to have a rather interesting poison type Pokemon, I guess I could recommend this one pretty good. You guys hate rotten eggs? Well guess what, we got six bad eggs for you right here. Because right here is Execute, a grass psychic type. It's not a bad typing, it's just 
some of the moves that it learns just don't really suit it quite well. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was rather broken in the first game, but in here, it's alright. To evolve it, you need to have a Leaf Stone, and it becomes Executor. Another interesting favorite of mine. All because of it, of what it does for a living. <laughs> anyway, Executor is a decent Pokemon, but you know, the problem is, it's hard for me to recommend it because it's not that much of a good Pokemon. While it's a really average Pokemon and a really great special attacker, I just think that it just can't take hits in it pretty well to save its life. So, pretty much anything that hits it with a fire type, yeah, you can pretty much just kiss your life goodbye with this one. I'm not quite sure I cover this one yet, but oh well. Up next is Parasect, the evolution of Paris. Like Paris, it is a horrible Pokemon. I really don't recommend this one a lot. Because its stats are god awful and its move pool just does not suit it at all. As I said before, its stats are not really that good and it's just really hard for me to recommend this one. But I do recommend this one if you want a more better HM slave. And that's pretty much all that I can really say about Parasect, really. How could we forget the very first Pokemon that was ever created? This is Rhyhorn. Uh, Rhyhorns are pretty hard to find, but if you can find one, I guess I could recommend this one if you want to have a pretty decent defensive wall. Everything else for it, not so much. It is a great physical attacker upon its final evolution, but in later generations, it gets nerfed like crazy later on. When it evolves into Rhydon, it becomes a more powerful wall, and also a great physical attacker. But unfortunately, it is really freaking slow. So, I guess if you want to have a really good rock Pokemon that can actually take physical hits really, really well, this one I actually would recommend. The only downside is it is really, really freaking slow. So, this is a good Pokemon to have, but you really, really need to know how to use it properly or it's not going to be good in any way. So, there's right on for you. But on top of that, there is a Pokemon that I really want to talk about. It is the almighty Chansey. You have a 1% chance of finding this thing in the wild. And it is probably the hardest Pokemon you can find and catch. This one is a pretty good special wall. Everything else is not that good, especially as attack and defense. But it has a ton of HP. Having the second highest base HP of 250. <laughs> this thing is abysmal. I don't really recommend this one. Despite it really being a really good special wall. But it does have a crap ton of HP. Don't get me wrong. But if you can find this thing and catch it. I could commend you guys pretty well because it has a chance of holding an item called the Lucky Egg, which doubles the experience that you get. So, they're really hard to find and they're hard to catch, but if you can do that, I commend you for it deeply. Up next is Kangaskhan, a normal type Pokemon that many people used to think it was a ground type. Not really. Uh, Kangaskhan's they're kind of hard to find, and they're kind of hard to catch. It gets a weird mega evolution, or kind of lack thereof. But if you want to have a pretty average normal type, this one is a good Pokemon to have. While its stats are pretty well balanced out, it's a really good physical attacker, and it's also pretty quick. Um, while its special attack is pathetic, everything else is actually pretty good. So, if you want a really good normal type, this one I can recommend. If you all have thought that that Chansey was hard to find, I call Taurus shit. <laughs> Get it? Because Taurus is a bull? Okay, anyway. Up next is Tauros, the last Pokemon that you can find out here. Like Chansey, it is really hard to find. In a couple of areas, it's 1%, but in the others, it's 4%. 
It is probably one of the best normal type Pokemon that you can find. If you can find this thing and catch it, I commend you. And it's a really good Pokemon. It doesn't evolve, but it really doesn't need to. While its stats are the same as Kangaskhan's, but it's a lot more aggressive and more fast. But it kind of lacks in the HP, though. But it does have the same special attack stat as Kangaskhan. But if you want to have a really good physical attacker, this one is at the top of my recommendation for a normal type. Just don't call anything else about Taurus, Taurus shit. <laughs> I actually never went over this Pokemon when we got the good rod. Uh, there are a couple of places where you can find wild Poliwags out here. Poliwags are actually not too bad special attackers. They're pretty good bulky Pokemon. And they're not too bad of a Pokemon. When they evolve into Poliwhirl... It becomes a more of a good Pokemon. You can actually find these Pokemon by Super Rod in a couple of places. Um, if you've gotten yourself a Poliwhirl, now will be a good time to do that Jinx trade. That I was telling you guys about in a previous episode. Uh, but yeah, this one is not a bad Pokemon. It has the potential of evolving into two Pokemon, but you can only get it into its one evolution, which is... Poliwrath, a water fighting type Pokemon. Really unique typing. Um, it ties with that of Keldeo for having a water fighting type stat. And I think it ties with another Pokemon as well, but I don't know. Poliwrath is a really good balanced out Pokemon. It gains a couple of weaknesses thanks to its fighting type that it gains. And in order to get it, you need to use a water stone for it. Since it's a really balanced out Pokemon, I kind of call it a double-edged sword, and it can take hits pretty well in terms of both attack and special attack. Um, there's not really that much left to say, but the only thing I can say is, get yourself Michael Phelps' favorite Pokemon of them all. If you all think that Krabby was being a crab, <laughs> you haven't seen anything yet. Meet Kingler, one of the new Pokemon you can find while we're on Route 21, heading straight for Cinnabar Island. It's only exclusive to um, Leaf Green, so you guys kind of get nerfed out of that a little bit. Alright. Kingler is a really good physical attacker. Its water and physical attacks don't exist in this game, but in the fourth generation and onward, it becomes a deadly tool of destruction. It's a really good Pokemon with a lot of physical power. Since this thing is a really good physical attacker, Pretty much anything that has a high hit and critical hit ratios given to this thing is going to do a lot of damage. So I can assure you that no psychic type Pokemon who has weak defense is going to be safe from this thing. That is, on the fourth generation onward. I was actually wrong about Horsey. It's only exclusive to Fire Red. So me and my infinite knowledge goes down the drain. But anyway, you can find Seedras out here by, at Route 21 by Super Rod as well. This thing is actually a pretty decent water type Pokemon. Even though it's a Dragon type, it's a water type. To get it to its final evolution, Kingdra, it has to trade it with a Dragon Scale. You can actually find the Dragon Scale in Fire Red, but much later on. It gains an ability called Poison Point, which has a chance of leaving a Pokemon poison upon physical contact. This thing is a really good Pokemon that can withstand hits pretty well, except for special attacks. It's also pretty quick, I guess, but everything else is not really that good. So I guess if you want to have a pretty balanced out water type, this one is actually okay to have. You guys trying to find a pure grass type Pokemon in the first generation? Unfortunately, there is only one, Tangela. Uh, Tangela's are not bad. They're, it's just kind of hard for me to recommend this one. It, it gains an awesome evolution in the 4th generation. And if it could have done that in this game, I would have recommended this one a lot. It's more so of a wall than any grass-type Pokemon. But like the other grass-type Pokemon, it, it hinders its Pokemon rather decently. This one, it's more of a wall than the other grass-type Pokemon that we've seen so far. It's not a bad Pokemon, I just think... 
that its evolution should have been in this generation, but... Oh well. To each his own. While surfing along the huge bodies of water, constantly you will find tentacool. Many people have run into these things a lot and they get tired of it. Um, many people underestimate tentacool. Despite on how common it is, it's actually really good. It is a fantastic special attacker and it's a fantastic special wall. It lifts up to the bulk that it has for a water type and it lifts up to the special attack power that poison Pokemon usually get. While it's not really that good yet, but if you can get to its final evolution, it becomes one of the best special walls in the game. Really unique, really good Pokemon. I would highly recommend this one a lot. Say hello to the Pokemon that is known for defying the laws of reality for being a rock type Pokemon. It is Aerodactyl. This one tears things up. It really does. If you want to have a really good aggressive flying type Pokemon that gets the job done, you got it. Aerodactyl just does that. Its stats right here pretty much just show on how much it lives up to the power that it has. It is one of the fastest of Pokemon in the game and is a really good physical attacker. It gains an awesome Mega Evolution in Generation 6 and it just becomes practically unstoppable in that game. So, yeah, if you want to have an awesome special attacker who gets the job done, you got it. Aerodactyl does just that. If you've gotten a Raichu on your team, there is someone on Cinnabar Island who would trade you an Electrode for a Raichu. This thing is the fastest Pokemon in the game, and it's also a pretty average special attacker. Downside! It is really frail. Like, God, like, one major attack on this thing, and it's gonna go down. Pretty much anything that hits it with a powerful ground type move, yeah, it's gonna go down, especially in this game. But it's really fast. I guess it means it practically guarantees one free hit, but it's gonna go down. So I guess you could get lucky with this one. Just be careful on how you use it, though. Just make sure it doesn't go boom on your face. If you have a seal on your team, I don't think you should have one quite yet, but if you got one, there's another person in there who will trade you a Ponyta for it. Ponyta is actually not a bad Pokemon. It's pretty good in a later generation, but in this game, it's not really that good. I used it in my Pokemon Platinum LP, and you all get to know on how good it is. While it becomes one of... The one of the fastest fire type Pokemon's ever. In this game, it becomes the fastest fire type in the game. Take that, Charizard. <laughs> it's more of a physical attacker, and it's really good in terms of speed, so it's kind of like Flareon, only better. So, I guess if you want to have a rather interesting fire type Pokemon that's really good in terms of doing physical damage, this one is actually not a bad Pokemon to have. 